Right. Welcome back everybody to another tutorial and this one we're doing today has been requested to me for quite a long time already and I'm finally doing it, especially my hair is appropriately long enough for this now. It's um, about four and a half inches on top and about two inches on the sides. And my hair is completely clean right now, completely degreased. I just stepped out of the shower. It's still, um, there's no product in it, but just water. And I towel dried a little, but I think I should towel dried a little more and that'll make it a bit too, um, too dry, but just slightly damp. Now, as in every tutorial, I'm gonna start with clean, dry hair as right now. And so let me tell you the basics of how I define a pompadour. Now, some people think height is the most important thing in a pompadour, but I believe that's one of the, um, that's not important at all. It's something you can add in there, but height is not the most important thing in a pompadour. For me, it's all about the shape and the form of a pompadour. It needs to be round and forward. It needs to curve forward at the front. It needs to be round and not super blocky or flat. If it's not round, then it's not a pompadour. And also it generally follows a wedge shape profile. So it kind of goes, um, there's a round bulge at the front and then it just gets smaller from there. Kind of like a wedge shape that curves at the front. That's how I define a pompadour. So basically the most important thing here is you want to achieve that round shape. And we're going to use three products today. And this is what I'll start with. The Rouge Grooming Tonic. I've done a video on this for um, quite a long time ago. And this, in my opinion, is an amazing pre-styler. Now, um, for some of you liquid pre-stylers such as tonics, these might be a little bit too brittle as in they can't really hold your foundation that well if the hair is super thick, which is why you can use them um, Cream pre-stylers like Lockhart's Enigma, for example. I used that one as a pre-styler in my Element Strong video, but today I'll use the Grooming Tonic, which is actually, actually one of my favorite pre-stylers, and this one works really well. So the purpose of a Grooming Tonic as a pre-styler like this is that you want it to build the right foundation for your hair to hold in place. Now this won't exactly give you hold. It gives you a very, very light hold but it gives you just enough hold in order to build the perfect shape, the perfect foundation in order to build your pompadour. So I'm mainly applying it to the top because that's where we really want the nice shape to come in and just a little bit on the sides. I usually use about one splash, basically like for me that is a little more than dime sized amount, but sometimes I just use a tiny bit more and apply it to the the top of my hair. And now we've got the tonic all over our hair. And this actually is a heat activated tonic, so it won't really work its magic unless you blow dry it, use the heat of the blow dryer. And first of all, I just slick everything back. And to make our life easier, this is gonna be a part of the pompadour because my hair naturally parts and I can't do a full pompadour. So you're just gonna slick everything back and find the comb line. And there we make our side part. Now for blow drying, I like to use this brush because we can, we can just take uh, the top of our hair and just curl it a little bit while we blow dry it with the heat. And let's just do exactly that. Now, something I should really mention is that um, for the unparted side, I comb it straight back while it blow dry. And for the other side of my hair, over here, just right after the part, I would just go in a semicircular motion like this while I blow dry. And while I do that, I also make it just really forward so I go in a semicircular motion and then push it forward, tease it forward at the same time.
going to shape it a little more. And for our part again. Now forming your part is actually a lot, lot easier if your hair is damp, so you can just uh, re-dampen your hair with just a little bit of water. And now I'm just going to not use the brush anymore and I'll use a comb and I will blow dry with this comb and while I do that I will comb the sides backwards because you want it to go backwards. We can also um, do some final tweaks with the comb as you blow dry again. So now we have formed our basic shape already and when I tweaked it a little with this comb I just um, comb everything straight up but I don't really um, push the back forwards too much because again we want push the, I mean push it backwards too much because you want it to go as forward as possible and now it's time for us to Use our pomade. So again, just slightly dump your hair with a little bit of pom a little bit of water, because to me, um, oil-based pomades really go in a lot easier if you use damp hair, but not dripping wet. Just make sure it's slightly, slightly damp, and you can see the shape is still retained. And our first pomade today will be, you guessed it, another Rugel product, Rugel Pink, which is the heavy hold oil-based pomade. So we'll just take a little bit of this. And now because my sides um, are, they tend to be relatively fluffy since I have Asian hair, I want most of the heavy pomade to go to my sides. You want to weigh it down so they can go back um, as much as possible. We need something with a lot of slickness to it. So I'm taking this much of product, rubbed it in, and I'll Apply it to the sides first and the back. That's where I'm really focusing the heavier stuff on. I'm, I really want to apply it to the sides to make sure that it sticks as much as possible. And then while we have a little bit of the heavy product remaining, we just put it in top of our hair. Now the thing is, you want your hair to be um, as forward as possible. You even want it to be weighed down too much which is why you shouldn't apply too much of the heavy stuff into your hair. Most of it goes to the sides and the back, but just put a little bit on the top. I'm just gonna comb that in first. As you can see, the sides are really nice and slick. We'll just lick everything back with the white tooth end of the comb on top. You can slick it back however you want, but just make sure that, yeah, I'm redoing my part right now. But just make sure that you um, divide it where the part is on your hair. And now for a second product, 
for more slickness and more shine, we're going to use the medium hold um, grease from Ruzel. Also, a Ruzel product. Everything in Ruzel. You know, for these tutorial videos, I just like to use um, all products from one specific company. Like, I used everything Lockhart's in my Elephant's Trunk video, and now I'm using everything Ruzel. It's just them. Um, nice and organized that way. It's pretty fun too. So I'm just going to take, um, this is mainly going to the top and some of the sides, but again, you don't want too much on the top. I'm just going to take a finger size scoop. Rub that in. Again, sides and back. And now we'll fizz it off on top. Make sure you really work it in. And now we're really getting greasy here, which is exactly what we want. Some um, hairstyles look better with oil-based pomades and pompadours are exactly uh, much better looking and either styled with an oil-based pomade, in my opinion. So now we have everything in. We're just going to slick everything back again. Now, how Ruzel does it, um, how they do in Scorum is that um, they actually mix the pink and green pomades in their hair and then they apply it. That's what they call the Muppet Mash. But as for me, I don't really prefer mixing pomades in just one hair and I like to apply one pomade first, slick everything back, and then apply the second pomade and then style. So we just want just like everything back in the sides first. And now let's get to the top. Use the um, wide tooth end and I form a semicircular motion like this. So we go to the side and over and top while pushing it with the back of my hand as well after that. And then I lock it in place by slicking the unparted side. I'll fix the back a little so everything is nice and neat. And finally, for better shape in the front, I like to use the wide tooth end again. Like the wide tooth end is actually the best for um, the front because you want it just um, as round as possible. That's the most important thing. I keep saying it. I am emphasizing that because that's really, really important in the pompadour. You shouldn't really want to use the narrow tooth end because it'll your hair will follow the narrow tooth end too much that it will go back even more when you actually want it more forward. That's why I like to use the wide tooth end. So you rest your palm on top over here and you tease it forward gently. Just tease it. Make sure you dig the um, teeth into your hair, but don't put it in too much. Tease it while pushing your hand forward. Lock it in place by combing the unparted side again. If you want, you can go for a duck's ass, a DA or a duck tail, where basically you comb the sides of your hair until they meet the center. But my hair isn't really long enough to do that, which is why I don't do DAs. And with my hair type, you need to grow your hair really long in order to do a, a DA, and I don't really want that. So I normally just comb it straight back, um, straight down. If the um, the comb method for teasing the front hair doesn't work for everybody, so if that doesn't work for you, you can just take your hand and just push it a little forward like this, just gently. And after you push it each time, again, lock it in place by combing that part of the side. So push, lock, push, lock. And that is my pompadour. Now I'll show you what my hair looks like under the proper lighting. 
This one here is the unparted side of my hair. And you can see that it goes round and forward at the front. That's what it looks like from the side. Another thing I want to say about the essentials of styling a rockabilly pompadour is that if you really want a true um, pompadour that captures the old school of rock and roll spirit, then a dead pompadour is one without any shine at all. For me, um, if you add shine to your pomade and to your pompadour from pomades, that is where the soul lies. The pompadour soul lies in its shine. So. You can have any level of shine, low shine, medium shine, high shine, greasy shine, I don't care as long as you actually have that shine in your pompadour if it's not matte. If it's um, a super slick and tight pompadour but it doesn't have any shine to it whatsoever, it's still pretty much dead to me. So just put your life into your pompadour by using a shiny product like an oil-based pomade. Oil-based pomades never fail to bring you shine, any kind of shine, no matter what level. Shine really works well for um, a pompadour and really captures that old school spirit. And that's all I have to say about styling a pompadour. If you enjoyed this video, learned a lot from it, um, please leave a like, comment, subscribe to this channel, click on the bell icon to never single upload at Squiddy Show. And I'll see you next time on the Squiddy Show. Stay greasy, everybody.